just got back from my run. Uh, this short one today, just a mile and a half. It's about 11, 11 now a.m. About to hit the shower, start driving to AC. I'll just catch some lunch on the road and uh, hop into event one tonight at six. So hopefully, hopefully no shenanigans. Just take it down today. Well, you know, and I guess I guess it's probably a two or three day event. So, you know, not like immediately today, but you know, I'd be cool with bagging the Chipley. Um, I've done it before. <laughs> Can do it again, why not, right? Let's not delay, let's just get on the road. Let's go. Just made it into New Jersey a little bit ago. And now just getting back on the road. Tournament starts at six. So I might sneak in a little nap first. Get to it. Let's go. Over here is that as the first room at the Conalondo Stadium. Pretty nice TV. It's kind of funny. I, I paid for a room that said it was uh, two beds. And he said, okay, it's a double bed, two bed, but only sleep in one bed. <laughs> I was like, all right, fine, whatever. Which one? Which one do you think? Not giving away the secret yet. Not giving it away. So Steve hasn't texted me back yet. Mr. Mr. Caddison, chip extractor. So I don't know what his deal is. Uh, I hope he gets here soon. Because I'm probably going to head over soon, get some food. Register the tournament early, get some food, get uh, get ready to go. But in the meantime, I think I'm going to take a quick nap. So hopefully he'll be here when I wake up. <sighs> go register, get some food, and crush. Can't get mad at me for that anymore. Don't have a lot of time for sightseeing here. I just couldn't help but come to the top of the garage here at the Borgata. Love that nighttime view. <laughs> just never get sick of that. I know I never will. All right, so I think Steve just got here, which is good news because I haven't been here that long. I locked the car, right? That's a, that's a positive, yes. You know what that means. No update means did not make it to first break. I mean, I've busted in tournaments in an hour and a half before. It's not a huge deal, but it's frustrating because the passivity and the looseness preflop was insane. It's not something where you can raise big enough to isolate. If you're raising big enough to isolate, you are putting in like a third of your stack. <laughs> um, and the problem was 
I didn't really get many hands. And the hands that I did get, I had to sort of just correctly fold every time. Pocket nines in the small blind. Hijack opens to 350 at 75, 150. Cutoff makes it 1100. Uh, sorry, I was in the big blind. The button who has been playing almost every hand, like probably V-pip of, probably playing like 80% of hands, that's not an exaggeration, makes it 2,500, which is 7,500 back. We start with 25K, he's already down to 10K because he keeps calling, 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 calling flops with nothing. Occasionally he gets there. He's actually been getting there a lot, but it's still not enough to, you know, offset his losses. So he makes it 2,500. I just fold lines in the big blind. I, I think his range is pretty much kings and aces, maybe queens plus. So it folds around to the cutoff, he calls, flop is 10-4-3 rainbow. The cutoff then check calls another 2,500. Turns a nine, just for maximum pain. Uh, actually, and then he just check folds to like a 5,500 jam. Uh, and the button shows aces, so made the right fold there. Uh, maybe a couple orbits later, I open sevens in early position and it's like four calls and the flop is queen, jack, jack, two tone, and I just check fold to one bet. Not really anything I can do there, pretty standard. And then nothing else really happens until this hand, where we are at 100, 200. I've got about somewhere in the neighborhood of 20K to start this hand. I open Ace of Hearts, 10 of Clubs in middle position. Uh, it's like, it might be like under the gun plus two. I get five callers, five. So we go six ways to a flop. Flop is 10, seven, four, all hearts. So I've got top, top, nut flush draw, and five people behind me once it checks me. I put out a bet, I put out 2K. I don't really see any other way this hand goes down. Uh, I mean, I could check, but the thing is I'd rather bet now, um, maybe get some isolation against worst 10X, uh, and you know I can happily get this in pretty much against anyone. Unfortunately, probably one of the tighter players at the table, but it's hard to know because he's new to the table. He only sat down about 15 or 20 minutes ago, and this is level three, I think, end of level three. He makes it 6K, and I'm like, great. This is like one of the only players I didn't particularly want to see raise. The next player to act cold calls the 6K. That's not good. That's really not good. Folds back around to me, and I just felt like calling was a pretty disgusting option um, because if I call and I hit, it's just like impossible for me to get money. Um, if I, if I, I don't think I can really fold, so I'm too short stacked to make a small raise, so I just ended up shipping it. I think that's probably the right play, even though we're gonna get shown a flush and a set, or like a flush and a top pair pretty often. They both call pretty quickly, and uh, the first player who raised, I think he must have been like MP2, uh, he rolls over queens with the queen of hearts. The cutoff rolls over, or the I think he's a hijack. Hijack rolls over 10-7 of diamonds, so he is top two. I've got three outs to an ace for a better two pair, and any heart, there's eight left. So I've got 11 outs against two people. Turn is one of them, turns a jack of hearts. In ridiculously good shape, I'm somewhere around 92, 94% equity. I know it doesn't matter because the money you know, went in earlier, but I have an insane amount of equity, and the river, <laughs> the river's the last 10 in the deck. So between the two of them, uh, they only had three outs to hit once I hit the jack, and one of them came. So, you know, these spots where like, I have a bunch of outs against two people and I just brick brick, that's fine. <laughs> I don't really care about brick brick, but going hit the hand and then between the two of them they have three outs, but get there, those those hurt. Those really, they hurt. <laughs> so I don't think I'm playing any more poker tonight. Steve's still in. Um, he like doubled up in level one or something ridiculous. Uh, we have a small swap going, so hopefully, hopefully he'll make something happen here. Uh, I don't even know what I'm gonna do tomorrow. It's like, I come here to play a tournament I busted an hour and a half. I drove like more than twice that amount to get here, so it's kind of stupid. Feels like I should play a tournament tomorrow rather than cash because I could just play, honestly, probably better cash games at home than here. So it feels like I may as well fire a tournament, but we'll see. I'll have to see how, what I feel like tomorrow. I don't have to stay up late tonight, so if I want to play the morning play tomorrow, that would be pretty reasonable. I think it's like a bounty tournament, um, so that could be kind of fun. I'll have to see. Uh, tournaments are tournaments can be like this. I really don't like when I 
come in to play just one because it's like, if I bust that fast, it just kind of sucks, you know? There's really no way around it. You know, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go back. I'm really not in the mood to play after, after how that table was, so.